Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here to talk about the three different types of form factors that BlackBerry has to offer and talk about which one might just be the best out of all three of them. Of course, we have the all touchscreen design, which is kind of nice, you get all the extra real estate. We have the keyboard design, which is the pinnacle and OG when it comes to BlackBerry. You've got this fancy keyboard, and then we have the man of the hour, Whew. the sliding form factor, which we have with the BlackBerry Priv and some other devices. So before we dive in and take a look at these, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now, let's take a look at the BlackBerrys. Alright, so the first thing I want to look at is the all touchscreen BlackBerry. Now, in essence, when you get an all touchscreen BlackBerry, it feels very much less BlackBerry-ish. Now, it was cool uh, whenever the BlackBerry 10 devices came out, the Z10 was first, which kind of caught a lot of people by surprise because the keyboard was kind of the anchor point. It was what people associated with BlackBerry. So. Me, I actually didn't mind so much because I had been using an Android device briefly, the Samsung Galaxy S3, waiting for the BlackBerry 10 devices to come out. So day one, I went and I ditched my Galaxy S3 and I got the Z10. And I liked it quite a bit. Now it had a nice 4.2 inch screen, LCD display, it had all the bells and whistles, not really so much the apps, but it had all the bells and whistles of what felt like a premium device. Well, it didn't have the keyboard, and I was really hoping that the Q10 was going to come out then, and it didn't. Well, all that to say that the screens are nice, and they give you lots of things to do, and you get all this great screen real estate, but you're missing out on the traditional keyboard experience. So, I kind of talked about this a little bit in another video I made, asking if we still need Blackberries, and kind of at the end of it, I wrapped it up and said, I think there's still a place for Blackberries but I think that they need a keyboard. And if we're gonna get another device moving forward, I think that BlackBerry is gonna to have to do one of two things. One is it's gonna to have to include a keyboard, and the other thing they're gonna to have to do, we'll discuss in a minute. But having an all touch screen device is really nice though because you get all of this extra screen real estate. So if you put it side by side with the key two here, you can see that there's a significant amount of screen real estate there, which is really nice. And it has the BlackBerry software keyboard, which is, pretty darn good. Uh, it kind of stopped evolving a little while ago, but on BlackBerry 10, you could type on that quick, fast, and in a hurry, and I really loved it on my Z30. So pros and cons, yes. Uh, also, I think you probably get less battery life too because you have such a large, dis large display area to cover, but overall, I, I see why people want them because if you look at phones nowadays, you look at the iPhones, you look at the Samsung phones, they're all very large screens. So it would make sense that BlackBerry would want to try and get them where they can compete on the same level as other slabs. So yes, this is good, but I don't think it's quite the best form factor when it comes to what we think of as a BlackBerry. All right, so the second form factor that we have is we'll talk about the traditional, the OG, the keyboard. So this is the BlackBerry Key 2. This one is the most relevant, most powerful BlackBerry ever made, and it's a great phone. Totally love it. I even have the black one. I have a nice leather case on it too. I love this leather case. Uh, but either way, we have the keyboard, and if you have been a longtime BlackBerry user, you probably prefer this method or this model because this is what we've been using for years. You've got the nice four row keyboard. It's perfect. You've got the alt key. You've got the shift key and then you get the traditional typing experience. So looking back at a much older device, we have the BlackBerry Q10 here, and basically, whenever you stack these up side by side, even here, with such a significant time gap in between them, we still have the same iconic keyboard. Now, it may not be exactly the same when it comes to dimensions, it may not be exactly the same when it comes to the touch and feel, because things have evolved a little bit. So this right here, some people really didn't like the q that much, and they actually really liked the keyboard, but they didn't like the fact that it ditched the tool belt. So you don't have the iconic tool belt with the back, the end call, make call, menu button, all that stuff, the trackpad or the trackball. 
that that was kind of important. That was a really integrated integral part of the BlackBerry experience, and people loved it on the bold, and they ditched it with this because I guess BlackBerry thought, well, you have a swipe gesture based OS now, you don't need those, but still they came in handy. So then you have this, and I can't remember what I did with my passport. Ah, there it is. <laughs> so we have this and this, um, and they brought something great to the table, which was the touch sensitive keyboard. So no tool belt, but the keyboard, you can swipe on it just like an extension of the screen. And that's really nice because as you're scrolling, you can make the screen go up and down, you can go back and forth. There are so many different things that you can do. And it was nice having that in here and people kind of went, okay, I may not necessarily need having that tool belt if I can have a touch sensitive keyboard. So the keyboard really is more than just letters and numbers and symbols. There's a lot that goes into it, but at the same time, it does hold it back a little bit because it's really difficult to try to take something like this, which is porous, has a bunch of switches and everything else that goes along with it and try and make it waterproof. Now, some companies have been able to crack that egg and enter stage left, I have my Unihertz Titan, IP67 dust and water resistant, but it feels very much more like a membrane kind of keyboard. Uh, it's a little bit more spongy. The key press is just not as firm or as nice as you get on a BlackBerry. So that's just something that you kind of had to forego with the BlackBerry experience when it came to the keyboard. But even here, you know, looking at the BlackBerry Key 1 keyboard, there's some differences here as well. Uh, with the types of keys, you have the glossy plastic versus the more matte finish over here with the squared off keys. Keyboards are not all the same, but being able to have that touch sensitive feature or having a tool belt like you get with the classic, it really kind of opens things up and it makes it so much more versatile when it comes to multitasking. And there's nothing that I have found in my journeys of using a phone that is as accurate, is as reliable, and as enjoyable to type on as the physical keyboard. It's just so nice being able to sit there and I see comments, I even had one earlier that said, I miss being able to type without looking at the phone. You can't really do that on a slab phone. Yeah, you might kind of get used to it and build some muscle memory over time, but there's nothing that's as accurate or as precise as smashing these keys with your thumbs on your Blackberry. I'm sorry, that's just the way the world works. So we've looked at the all touch screen design. We've looked at the keyboard design. Now we're gonna look at option number three, the form factor that people really love. And that's the hybrid form factor or ta -da, the slider. So the slider is not something that started with the Priv. They had some other Blackberries before the Storm which would slide the screen up and people liked those devices. Some people really liked them, some people loved them. I didn't actually have a Storm, so I didn't really see what all the fuss was about when the Priv was coming out, because people are like, we need a slider, we need a slider. If you spend any time in Crackberry, you know people love the Blackberry sliders. So I actually bought this, I bought two of them when they first came out. I got one for me, and I got one for my wife, who was also an Android user, and she really liked the ability to be able to pop the screen up and use the physical keyboard. So this right here is the best of both worlds in many people's opinion because you get all the screen real estate of an all touchscreen BlackBerry, but then you get the convertible form factor and you place that keyboard inside of there so you can still get the traditional BlackBerry typing experience. And BlackBerry was very innovative, very revolutionary with this. This is actually an AMOLED display. It was a sharp phone and I love this thing. I used it for years, even though it got really, really hot and it could melt, you know, stuff in your pockets and you had to be worried, you know, careful with it because it really, really could heat up. And then of course, as soon as it, as soon as it went into heat mode, the battery life would start, you know, going down the drain. But BlackBerry did a lot of things right with this. The form factor, it's held up really, really well. The keyboard is nice and it's funny. <laughs> Whenever I first started using this, I didn't really like the physical keyboard all that much. I preferred to just type on the screen, but really and truly, it was more efficient typing on the keyboard, and it was still touch sensitive too. So yeah, when you slide it up, the screen goes up and it makes the phone really, really long. And here it is next to the key two. I mean, look at that. You're talking like an extra two inches longer than the key two, which is already a fairly tall phone. 
compared to the Passport. So Passport, then the Key 2 is a little bit larger, and then the Priv is even larger than that. But having that touch sensitive feature, the ability to reach out from nowhere and touch right here, as opposed to having to worry about the screen, kind of made up for that. So this right here, I think may be, may just be the ideal type of form factor that appeals to the mass market moving forward. So if BlackBerry decides that they want to make another phone, I think that there's really only two viable form factors. I don't think anybody really wants to sign off on an all touchscreen BlackBerry, which is nice as that would be if we could get two options. I don't see that being the only option because if you can't do something the best and you're already down here, then you're probably not gonna get people to buy enough of them to make it profitable. So you have to stick with what you're good at and that's being innovative and that's being best in class keyboard or best in class in ingenuity when it comes to the sliding phone. So if they make something new, then you're probably gonna have to hope for one of these. And this right here, as much as I love this, this right here appeals to a lot of people because it's one, it's cool, two, it works, and three, you get the best of both worlds. You get a large screen, with, but you can still use the keyboard and type on it as if it were a traditional BlackBerry. But my intuition would be that something like this would be a more plausible thing going forward because I think still more people prefer the keyboard. Now y'all can sound off in the comments because I'd really like to know what people think is the best or is their favorite. Do you like the keyboard? Do you like the slider? Or do you like the slab glass touchscreen? Me, I prefer to have this. Now I do like having the ability to have a keyboard and a screen. And if they could do it right, because here's my thing. I love typing on this. I don't love typing on this. Now it's okay for typing. It's actually pretty darn good, but it's a little cramped. The, the key press was a little too soft for me and had a real short key press. This right here to me is the bee's knees. I love this keyboard. I love having Android, I love having the large screen because they managed to stretch it out where it's not the one-to-one -one aspect ratio. And they even put the fingerprint sensor into the space bar. So if they could find a way to put a keyboard like this on here, maybe make it a little bulkier, make the housing a little bit larger. If they could nail the keyboard on this, I would probably lean more towards this because this right here is nice. As much as I like using this when I wanna play games, when I wanna consume media and do some other things or like turn it landscape instead of portrait mode, it's really not the best in the world. But for communication, which is 90% of what I do, it's absolutely perfect. So if they could find some way to make the perfect sliding form factor, a Priv, a priv 2.0, if you will, and address some of those issues, but give us this keyboard, I think they might could be onto something. So that's all I've got with taking a look at these different unique form factors. I keep just picking up different Blackberries down here. I have so many of them. <laughs> I've collected them over the years and I've bought some. So having a look at this, yes, I just keep grabbing one. But this right here, I think is the best. It is my favorite. But I think if we're to see something one day that's going to appeal to normal people who don't care so much about picking up a BlackBerry and losing the screen real estate, but still appeal to diehard BlackBerry fans and give us a keyboard, this might be the magic ticket when it comes to anything we might could see in the foreseeable future. So I don't know. I don't know if it, BlackBerry has anything up their sleeve. I don't know if you know we're done and we're not going to get anything else, but I wanted to take a minute <clears throat> just to explore these different options and take a look at some of the really cool um, engineering and designs that BlackBerry put into their stuff because they've been on the cutting edge of innovation with what you've been able to do for a smartphone for a long time. They invented the keyboard, basically. They reinvented the keyboard. keyboard. They gave us the capacitive keyboard and then they gave us the slider. So there's a lot of stuff that BlackBerry has done over the years and of course, Maybe it's something we could see again one day. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to hold my hope, hold out, hold my breath, or hold out any hope for it. But maybe this is maybe this is a golden ticket. But I don't know. Tell me. You let me know in the comments what is your favorite BlackBerry design. Is it the keyboard? Is it the all touch screen? Or is it the slider? So that's all I've got for this video. 
Hopefully it's something you enjoyed. Hopefully it's something that you, know, you can think about, process around a little bit. And if you have some comments, go ahead and feel free to leave them down there. We can talk BlackBerry stuff because there's not an opportunity we get to do that very often anymore. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you being here. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can get updates when new videos come out. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.